This video shows you how to get started with the DevExpress WPF spreadsheet control. We'll complete the following steps. Set up a simple spreadsheet application, run the application and review built-in data analysis features, including pivot tables and charts, customize the integrated ribbon control, and modify document content in code. First, let's create a new WPF application using the DevExpress template gallery. In the list of available DevExpress WPF templates, select Blank Application and click Create Project. Find the DevExpress spreadsheet control on the toolbox and drag it onto the main window. Reset the controls layout so that it fills all available space. That's all you need for basic app setup. And press Run. As you can see, the spreadsheet control automatically added a ribbon bar and a status bar to the application. We'll soon review a few advanced end user features, and you'll also notice lots of integrated menus and dialogues. All of this UI is available to you without having to write any code. Let's start by copying some data into the spreadsheet. If you have DevExpress controls installed on your machine, you can open the WPF spreadsheet demo and copy values from the pivot table module. You can double click right edges of column headers to make sure all column values are not truncated. Once you set up the layout you are comfortable with, you can select the data again and use the Format as Table option to apply a style sheet to cells. Now that you have your data added and formatted, press Print Preview and explore the printing capability automatically integrated into the DevExpress spreadsheet control. Note that not only can you print out the document, but also export it to a PDF or image file. Our next big goal is to analyze this data in a pivot table. So let's add two more columns based on existing date values, month and quarter. Similar to Microsoft Excel UI, you can start typing in a formula and the month function is readily available. Since there's not ready to use functioning for quarter calculation, we'll build a formula that rounds up the month number divided by three. Once the number calculation is in place, let's use the concat function to add the word quarter to the formula. Once both initial formulas are set up, drag the selection handle down to copy the formulas to the rest of the cells in the column. Once again, select the data and apply the same table formatting style. We now have all the data we need for the next step. So let's select all cells, switch to the Insert tab, and click Pivot Table. A dialog appears where you can choose to place the pivot table onto a new or existing worksheet. Leave the default option selected and click OK. The next dialog helps you set up pivot table layout. Drag the category and product fields to the row area and all date-related fields go to the columns area. Start with quarters, then months, 
then dates so you can build a proper hierarchical display. Finally, drag amount to the value area. The pivot table now displays summarized amount data calculated against products and dates. To apply currency formatting to displayed sums, right click any value and select value field options. Click number format and select currency. The workbook now displays two sheets and will soon add a third. So let's double click the tab headers at the bottom to specify meaningful sheet captions. Set the current sheet's name to pivot table. Rename the other one to data. The third sheet will display a chart based on pivot table data. Return to the pivot table sheet, collapse quarters to display top level summaries only, and copy the quarterly sales numbers for the dairy products category. Let's add a new worksheet and set its caption to chart. Paste the data and adjust the layout. On the Insert tab, select a 2D column chart action and the chart will appear. This concludes a quick overview of key data analysis features built into the DevExpress WPF spreadsheet control. Let's save the created document so we can use it the next time we run the application. Once you close the application and return to XAML view, use the controls document source property to refer to the saved document. As soon as you specify a correct path, the control opens a document and shows you a preview at design time. Run the application to see the same spreadsheet automatically loaded. During the next step, let's customize the integrated ribbon control. First, add two prefix definitions that refer to the DevExpress bars and ribbon namespaces. Once that's done, make sure that the spreadsheet control has a closing tag so nested tags can be added. Define a ribbon actions collection property and add a remove action to it. In the element name attribute, define the command you want to hide. Use the ribbon item prefix followed by tab, group, and action names. Once you've identified the new file command, copy and adjust the resulting string to hide the open file command too. Now let's run the application, and you can see that the specified commands were in fact removed from the UI. Now use an insert action to add a new command to the ribbon. In this case, the element name specifies the ribbon tab. The nested ribbon page group indicates that a new group titled custom group needs to be added. Finally, the next level element adds a bar button item with a specified caption, click handler, and an image. Since no function has yet been defined for the click handler, right click the attribute value and select go to definition. Once the application generates a stub function, you can run the application. We'll add the handler code in the next step. As you can see, the ribbon command has been added as specified. Clicks on it have no effect for now, so close the application and let's add some code. We'll review the main parts of this code snippet. First, we get access to the workbook interface. 
we use the obtained object to add a new worksheet to the collection. The worksheet object allows you to access individual cells and set their values directly. For the third cell, the code sets a formula and also changes the background color. Now let's run the application to see the result. Click the custom command to execute the handler code. A new sheet is added and cells are initialized as specified. You can learn more about the Spreadsheet API in DevExpress documentation. A good place to start is the product structure topic that lists all key classes and interfaces you can use to manage spreadsheet documents in code. And that's it for this video. To learn more about this topic, make sure to check out the links available in the description. You can also learn more about our WPF controls by watching other videos from this playlist or visiting the documentation on our website. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified whenever we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.